why am I talking about Taiwan today specifically? And this is from an energy context. So Taiwan is on the cusp of having new elections. And uh, these elections, they are going to set the tone for how Taiwan is going forward in the world of energy. And for me, the nuclear bit is specifically important. Now, the upcoming elections have brought nuclear into sharp focus and unfortunately nuclear has become a polarized subject so for clarity in taiwan you have three major political parties the dpp the kmt and the ppp now i'm not going to tell you how these political parties differ nor am i going to tell you who must win because that is for the taiwanese to decide now the trouble in the case of taiwan is that the vice president mr lai is also a candidate for the current presidential elections and he is the front runner so he has positioned himself in opposition to nuclear energy and this in part is because the other two candidates have appropriated nuclear energy which basically meant that the vice president and his party uh, got deeper entrenched in this anti-nuclear strategy that they were running and we see this very often and this leads to very unforeseen and unfortunate repercussions why is this relevant in this context now consider, for instance, Spain. It has gotten a new government that is doubling down and closing their nuclear power plants. Now this obviously is a mistake because they are now following in Germany's footsteps. And there's a real risk that Taiwan is going to try to do the same. Let us get an idea of how much capacity there is in Taiwan, how much energy they need. They have roughly 30 gigawatts of fossil fuel capacity. 17 gigawatts of this fossil fuel capacity is coal. 13 gigawatts of this capacity is gas. They also have roughly four and a half gigawatts of hydropower installed. Now the peak load in Taiwan back in 2016 was 35 gigawatts. We also have to consider that they had 50 gigawatts of capacity back in 2016, of which 95% was dispatchable. Now there are six reactors in Taiwan. Two are operational and four have been shut down. There are also two reactors that they started to build but never finished. Now the two operational nuclear reactors have a combined capacity of roughly two gigawatts and the shut down nuclear reactors have a combined capacity of roughly 3.7 gigawatts. And then there's the one that has never been completed, that's 2.7 gigawatts. So suppose that you could restart uh, Kuosheng and Jinshan uh, that would add roughly three gigawatts of nuclear power to the Taiwanese grid. Now, the problem is it's unclear to me whether all of these nuclear reactors are still salvageable, so the ones they are decommissioning. Maybe two of them can be saved, maybe three of them can be saved, maybe, maybe even four of them can be saved. So whatever happens next in these presidential elections in Taiwan, it's probably going to be pretty important for the future of the existing nuclear fleet. So what's next? Now, Taiwan has a pretty ambitious target for renewables. Uh, they aim to build 20 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2035 and add another 20 gigawatts of solar by 2035. Now that's great, but it's probably never going to be enough to support the Taiwanese grid. As we saw earlier, peak demand has already been 35 gigawatts. So extending the lifespans of just the two nuclear reactors in, in Taiwan uh, seems to be a smart thing to do. Now that would at least secure two gigawatts of capacity. They could maybe even stretch it up to three or four gigawatts. But then what do you need to do next? Having this renewable infrastructure plan is great and all, but you really need something else in order to make sure that you can transition away from fossil fuels and, and that you can secure your economic productivity. So for Taiwan, both large and small reactors are a good, are, are a good idea. So I'm thinking about US-Taiwan relations, for instance, the AP-1000 or the BWRX-300 in particular could be very interesting reactors that could be deployed in Taiwan and which would benefit their bilateral relations, um, but also maybe uh, adding APR-1400 from the South Koreans could be uh, a very smart move for Taiwan. But here's the ultimate tip for Taiwanese politicians who want to secure a prosperous future for the Taiwanese. And this can be done 
retrofitting existing capacity which Taiwan already has. Now, I'm obviously talking about the coal capacity. Now, the great thing is you have to talk to your friends in the United States and you have to ask to be included in what is called Project Phoenix, retrofitting coal plants uh, with nuclear reactors. So basically what you do is you get the coal-fired power plant bit out and you put a nuclear reactor in, you attach it to the existing generator, a presto, you have a nuclear power reactor. The technologies are very interesting and very promising. You have high temperature molten salt reactors, which are being commercialized as we speak. There's liquid metal fast breeder reactors, which are also being commercialized as we speak. There are also high temperature gas reactors, and there's even a manufacturer or a vendor of light water reactors that says that they can use a multi-stage compressor to level up the heat that comes from this light water reactor to be high enough to be used in this formerly coal-fired generator. So it's basically a win-win for Taiwan, for the US, for the reactor vendor for the people of Taiwan especially I think that's the most important bit and for the world at large because 17 gigawatts are waiting to be retrofitted basically turning the dirtiest possible power producers into some of the cleanest now let's hope that the facts will sway Vice President Lai and at least soften his stance on nuclear maybe even become tentatively pro-nuclear because nuclear belongs in the middle it is not left it is not right, it's not conservative, it's not progressive. It's just a source of energy with a lot of great benefits. I wish the Taiwanese a lot of wisdom for their next choice, and I hope that Vice President Lai will reconsider his position on nuclear, because it would be a shame if Taiwan lost its nuclear workforce merely because of ideological oppositionalism. And with that, you have reached the end of this video. Now, if you're still here, thank you, because Watch time is the lifeblood of any channel on YouTube. Now, if you want to support me, help me make more videos, uh, check out how you can do so in the description below. May the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.